Hello everyone, this is Aida from The Athenian Maker, coming to you from Athens in Greece. It has been quite some time since I last recorded a video here and I wanted to start again making podcasts. But um, during the last months I have uh, been making so many things, mostly knitting projects. And um, in a regular podcast it would take like too long to show them. So um, this uh, episode is going to be just with uh, all the knits that I made during uh, the last month. Most of them are summer knits. There are like a couple of um, winter projects, but um, most of them are summer knits. So I hope uh, you like it. The, fir the first uh, project that I'm going to talk about uh, is uh, this vest that I'm wearing. This was actually a test knit uh, that I finished in June, I think. Yes, it, it, it uh, was in June. It is a design from a bigger than life knits. Um, as you can see, this um, uh, a plaid vest. You start knitting it uh, from the top down. And as you knit, you create uh, the horizontal lines. And in the, in the same time, you work some uh, pearl um, um, rows um, so that uh, in the end, after the vest is completed with a crochet hook, um, the vertical lines are created. And uh, that was actually one of the reasons that I wanted uh, so much to um, test knit this project because I would like to start learning crochet and uh, I had tried in the past, but uh, with not much success. It was almost impossible to create the, um, uh, the stitches, to pass the hook through the stitch. And so I, I thought that this would be like um, a simple uh, and project to, to practice um, uh, creating those crochet stitches. And uh, it, it, it actually was uh, a very simple and it was a very good practice. What uh, made the difference though from um, all the times that I tried it on the past was uh, the hook that I used. So I had talked about it uh, to an Instagram friend that uh, she is a crocheter and also a knitter. And um, she recommended that probably the problem was the hook that I was using and um, that I should uh, buy a better brand and um, a hook that has, uh, where the hook is actually a bit deeper so that the yarn can, um, uh, can stay there. Uh, the hooks that I had were uh, some very cheap hooks that I had bought uh, from Lidl like many years ago before I even wanted to start <laughs> learning how to crochet. And um, to them, uh, the hook uh, part was uh, very shallow and so the yarn didn't stay there and it was, uh, for me, as um, with no experience in crochet, it was very difficult to use them. So um, she recommended to me to buy the uh, Clover Amour and I did uh, buy this brand and that's the one that I used for this uh, vest. And it made such a difference. It was so easy uh, to create all these vertical lines. So it was uh, so it was so much uh, easier uh, with uh, this new hook, and uh, I'm very glad about it. So what else? Uh, I needed uh, I needed size three uh, from the pattern. Um, I used uh, a four millimeter needle in a DK uh, weight organic cotton. Uh, this is such a uh, soft yarn and uh, it was knit very fast. Like especially after I started working in the round, uh, it was uh, like in a few days I finished it. And you can see that I have still not woven in the ends, <laughs> although this is finished so many months now. But because now is the, um, the appropriate weather uh, to wear uh, this uh, vest, I'm going to sit uh, tomorrow and uh, the next days and to weave in the ends so that I can wear it. I have blocked it, but I just have not woven in the ends. So this is it about the Clue Mellow vest. It's a lovely pattern. 
and uh, the designer is uh, bigger than life needs. This is uh, the second project that I knitted uh, during the summer, and it is also another one that is season appropriate for uh, the weather we have at the moment. This one is a Vozala a shawl. It is from a Greek designer from Maria Ziyahu, and Vozala means pebbles in Greek. It is a very beautiful shawl. Maria designs a um, lovely lace, uh, uh, mostly lace uh, shawls. And this is one of them. So it is, um, uh, it is a design uh, with, um, uh, with uh, this part that is all uh, stock in it. And there, is, um, uh, there are some small sections of garter stitches here in the edges and also uh, this uh, lace along the border. There um, she uses a uh, short uh, short rows to create um, this kind of um, like a wave effect. I don't know if it is um, noticeable in the video, but there are like some waves created uh, along the border. Maybe here it is, uh, you can see it better. So um, I needed this uh, in bamboo linen, uh, in fingering bamboo linen yarn and used uh, four millimeter needles. I wanted actually to make it a little bit more sheer than it is, but I could not find at that point my 4.5 needles, so I went with this. And um, I did some changes um, in the pattern. Uh, the pattern is designed to be a little bit like a short uh, show. And it would be like both sides would end at this uh, level, like this one here. But uh, at uh, some points in the pattern where the designer does not make any increases, I continued increasing, increasing even to those points. And so to make it a little bit longer. And uh, also in the short row ways, I added one more because I had made the, the show longer. So I thought that, so I added one way, one extra way to that. Apart from that, I just follow the pattern. It is written in English and it is a very well written pattern. And I had so much fun knitting this during the summer. I just love this show. Like, I love uh, all these uh, details with uh, this simple lace. It makes the show very airy and um, it is really pretty. It is one of uh, the favorite, uh, my favorite things that I knitted during last summer. And I have been wearing it uh, already a lot. So, a uh, Vozala show by Maria Ziyako. So, let's go to the next one. And this is also a favorite one. I have worn this so much. Uh, this is uh, the Hippo uh, Tea by Meiju KP. I made this uh, in uh, fingering bamboo and linen and used a three millimeter needles. Made size four. And um, what else? I think this is it about the whole, I didn't, uh, about the details. So uh, this is another uh, project that is knitted from the top down. There is like uh, a very beautiful uh, lace detail here um, in the shoulder and goes uh, until the arm. And there is a v-neck and um, most of the work, like the dif difficulty of the pattern, is done uh, up to the point that you separate uh, the sleeves from the bodies. 
because the lace uh, ends there and then uh, also almost it's almost the point where you have uh, um, you start working in the round so it's very easy knitting circular knitting and um, yes it, it was like a very easy pattern a very well written pattern I think that this is like the most um, well written pattern that I have ever used. I love the, the way that she has constructed uh, um, the instructions and how she explains everything. There are videos um, to for um, points like, for example, you bind off with the tubular uh, bind off. And uh, she has two separate videos. One is uh, like a shortcut, which is the one that I use. And the other one is the classic tubular bind off. It was the first time that I did it. And so uh, the video was, um, was totally needed and necessary for me. I, I watched the video every time that I had to bind off because, um, especially in the beginning, um, because I could not remember like how it is done. And um, what else? I have my notes here. Oh, uh, it is a, a very uh, size inclusive pattern. At least I think so because okay, everyone has different opinions, but uh, it reaches up to 155 centimeters bust, which is quite good, I think. Uh, about the sizing. So I made size four, as I said, and I think this is it. I use like two different uh, uh, colors and uh, I really love this uh, combination. As you saw, it, I, I did the same at the vest before. Um, yellow and pink this summer was like my go-to colors. And um, I made the v-neck yellow to connect a little bit the two parts and um, that's it. it is a little bit long uh, because I was not sure like uh, how long to make it. I wanted to be able to wear it uh, with jeans, but the truth is that I don't wear uh, jeans uh, quite uh, so often. I mostly like um, this kind of, um, you cannot see, it, but it's a culotte that I have made in the past. And so I mostly wear it like this, uh, tucked in. And um, I could have saved myself a lot of work and yarn if I had not done it so long. But anyway, it's okay, not a problem. And that's it. I'm very happy with this one. It's, uh, I, I love it. And uh, I'm thinking also of uh, making another one. Uh, it will be long sleeved and I will eliminate uh, the lace details. I have thought how to do it and I have written already uh, how to do it, to eliminate the lace. And I think it will work probably. Like I think why not, it will work. So this is it, uh, the Hinputi by Meiju, um, by, yes, Meiju KP. So I'm sure everyone knows this pattern. It is so popular, there are so many projects on Ravelry and also in the version like the one that I made with the eyelids. So this is the Tolstad tea by Rebecca Klo. I bought the version, um, uh, the, the pattern was for, uh, initially released in a DK weight yarn, for a DK weight yarn, but um, during the summer uh, Rebecca released also a fingering weight version of the pattern and uh, she offered it uh, for free along with this one, with the TK weight and as it had purchased it before, purchased it before we received it on our Ravelry and um, so we have now uh, two patterns for one and it's very lovely from Rebecca for doing that. So. Um, this is a raglan um, a pullover, a raglan tea. I turned it to a pullover, as you can see. And um, it is worked from the top down. It is uh, a basic uh, raglan pattern uh, for a DK weight yarn. And uh, the difference is though that um, Rebecca has included a PDF uh, archive 
where she suggests how you can um, modify uh, and how you can personalize uh, your this pattern to make it different. There are like it, there are not instructions how to achieve these looks. They are just ideas of uh, what you can do. And so uh, from all the ideas that were in the pattern, the ones are the ones that looked to me more appealing, mostly because it, is, it was easy, um, was uh, the eyelets. So I created uh, these cute eyelets. It's like, I just love this detail. It's such a simple, uh, small uh, uh, detail, but it makes, uh, to me, it makes like a very interesting uh, result. So I added uh, these eyelids. I made size four. I used uh, a, an organic cotton uh, yarn, the same one with uh, the vest, and um, knitted it in 4.5 millimeter needles. And um, also, I uh, I wanted it to be a pullover, and. Um, because I'm thinking like mostly knitting from now on only uh, um, pullovers with plant yarns because it will be more wearable for me. Like uh, in Athens, especially the part of Athens that I live, um, the winter is so mild. I know I have, <laughs> I say this almost uh, in every episode. And uh, no matter how much I love knitting with the wool, in the end, like I can rarely wear those uh, garments that I have knitted with wool. So probably like um, I will mostly knit uh, with plant yarns. Uh, maybe like I could knit a vest with the wool, but uh, for pullovers, this is uh, to me is more useful and more wearable. So what I was saying, I don't remember. Um, Yes, I, I decided to make it into a pullover and um, I didn't do anything, just like uh, I started knitting the sleeves and didn't stop until I was in the length that I wanted. I didn't make any decreases at all, it is just like a straight uh, sleeve. And uh, then I made uh, the same one by one uh, ribbing. Um, that's it. So I have not worn this yet, but because it's not uh, cold enough to wear it, but I look forward to it. I also want to make um, a version in fingering weight yarn. And for that, I was thinking uh, to, make, um, uh, to make it in stripes. So many knitters have done this in stripes and it looks so beautiful. And uh, probably that this is what I'm going to do with my next Tosta. So Tosta Tea by Rebecca Klo. Uh, this goes, let me check my notes. This goes, uh, it's also a, an inclusive pattern. It goes up to 160 centimeters bust. And um, that's it. I don't think I have to add anything else. Yes, so this is it, my toy study. So next it is uh, the Sophie's scarf that I'm at the moment uh, wearing it as um, a headscarf or as it acts also as uh, an ear warmer. And I have uh, let me take it off so that you can see it better. I made the small version and um, I knitted this uh, in recycled wood, a uh, wool, <laughs> wood, okay, uh, in recycled wool uh, in sport weight. And um, I have not noted down what sort of needle I used. <laughs> But anyway, I think everyone knows this scarf and there are uh, so many other versions uh, of this now from, uh, maybe there were before either, I don't know. But anyway, uh, there are so many versions of this uh, design of these little scarves. I have also made um, um, earlier uh, during um, 
uh, last winter I had made some of my own design. So it was a very quick knit and uh, I think I made this like during one day or something like this. It was a fun uh, little thing to knit. Okay, I don't know how this looks now, but anyway. And um, also, can't wait to wear it. It's a little cute uh, scarf. I had to switch to my camera because, to my phone, because the battery on my camera died. So I hope this is not disturbing. And the next project that I'm going to talk about is a bag. This is another uh, test knit that I did. I made this uh, during um, September. So it is uh, the trellis bag by Schnuffeltier. I follow Tracy here on uh, YouTube and also on Instagram. And when she posted about uh, that she was looking for test knitters for this bag, I immediately applied for it because I have never knitted a bag and I wanted to see how it is done. And it sounded like a fun little project to make. So um, the trellis bag, you start knitting uh, from the bottom with uh, this carter section. I'm not going to go into many details because this is a paid pattern. But uh, so you start from the bottom and you end um, with handles, such a smart pattern mostly. And um, I learned so many things, uh, interesting things knitting this. I knitted it in, um, uh, in a DK organic cotton. It is the same yarn like this one. And um, when I first finished it, and even like now when I see it, like it looks uh, to be a little bit um, shallow. But when it is filled with uh, things, um, this can take so many things. Like I use this. Uh, let me show it here. So I use this uh, uh, for uh, as a sh as a shopping bag. When I go to the supermarket, I have used it a lot. Someone even suggested that it would be like a, a nice bag to as a beach bag. And um, although I went to the beach like this week, but I forgot to take it. Maybe next time I will try it out. And um, what else? This is it. The trellis bag. It's a very cute pattern, at least for me, I had never done something similar. So this is it about the trellis bag. And the last project, I have my notes here. It is uh, this little hat. This is another test knit. It is the stripes and but and bridges stripes and bridges uh, pattern by Anna Plexis. Let me try to put this on. How will I show it to you? Maybe like this. Okay. So um, stripes and bridges. It comes in four sizes. I knitted size two. And I would usually make size three for this pattern according to uh, the gauge and the, um, um, the head circumference. I don't know how to say it. So, but uh, because I use a different yarn, so uh, Anna has designed this actually with one of my yarns. She has designed it with uh, a fingering uh, Shetland Wesley Day. Wesley Day, and uh, I used a different yarn. I used um, um, a sport weight uh, recycled yarn, and I did that because I wanted it to be like a little bit easier and quicker for me than using um, the fingering yarn. So let me first explain like um, 
how this pattern is. You start with uh, the ribbing, then there is a simple two color brioche. And then uh, there are cables in brioche. And this is like the first time that I made, uh, I knitted uh, cables. And this was the part that I was like um, a little bit intimidated. But um, it was, I made mistake, mistakes. There are like, there are some sections. Let me see if I can find it. Like here, something is missing here. Somewhere here, like you cannot see the cables very clearly there. But there are like, I think this is like a very good example of how it should look while this is wrong. Something is missing here. So I'm um, up to this point with a simple brioche. It is like very easy. But then you have to make these cables and it was uh, a little bit challenging for the first time. And the first time I did them wrong. Luckily, I had um, attached a lifeline, so it was very easy to pick up the stitches. And after that, I, I really like memorized the pattern. And I think I thought I did. And I was uh, knitting. Uh, I actually did because I, it is uh, the mistakes that I have done. It was not because I didn't remember well the pattern, but it was because I didn't pay much attention on what I was doing. Like I was uh, watching uh, a movie during uh, knitting this, and so that was not very smart <laughs> because I felt confident after uh, a moment and because I could uh, understand what uh, I had to do next. And so the mistakes happened, but uh, I didn't want to um, to repeat back. I have learned to live with some mistakes. <laughs> like uh, in the past, I was so perfectionist that like, I would not leave the simple, uh, the smallest mistake. I will repeat back without thinking it twice. But now I, um, I want to leave that back. I don't think it's very, so healthy to be uh, that perfectionist. And so um, uh, I think that this is not uh, the mistakes. Uh, like I, I will not see them, so they will not bother me. Because when you wear the hat, this part with the cables goes on the top. And you just see the brioche, uh, the simple brioche. So since I'm not going to see the mistakes, then I'm good with it. And um, what else have I noticed here? So I, I said that I made size two. I really like how it also looks uh, in the back, but only in this part with uh, the two color, the simple two color brioche, because afterwards when the cables start, like, it is a little bit, I don't know, it doesn't say anything. So, I don't, maybe I could wear it also from this side because, again, this part of the hat will not be seen. Only tall people are going to see it and I don't care. <laughs> so, it's nice from this side too. So probably I will wear it also like this. So this is it, stripes and bridges from Anna Plexis. And uh, I had the I have the opportunity to meet with Anna uh, every now and then when she comes in Greece because she's half half Greek. And this pattern is also written is in, written in English of course, but also in Greek. And I test knitted it in Greek and I at the first I was like, um, I'm not going to understand what I have to do because I have learned to knit uh, from YouTube, from English and um, I don't know the Greek terminology and some words don't make sense to me and I don't understand why we use those sort of words. Like for example, garter stitch in Greek is not even a Greek word. Uh, we use the word mousse that I think it's a French word for the garter and so I don't know and but uh, I didn't have any problem because Anna 
uh, explains like um, very well every part um, in advance. She explains it in written how you do everything. And because she's also, um, uh, she knows to knit uh, uh, from English, it's like maybe, you know, your mind works in a different way, like it was uh, um, an exact translation from English and she didn't use the Greek terms, so uh, it was easy for me to understand it. I don't know if this makes any sense. Anyway, this is it. These are all the projects that I made and uh, there are quite a few, like for me, these are a lot because normally like I will make one sweater in winter and uh, one uh, a tea, um, a, a short sleeve project in summer and that is it. But this was quite a lot. I had a lot of fun knitting this summer and I neglected a little bit my other hobbies. So I just... Um, um, I did like a, a couple of pieces, small pieces, uh, weaving projects in the beginning of the summer, but afterwards nothing. I didn't do any sewing at all, which is ridiculous <laughs> because uh, I don't know, I consider now it is uh, totally, uh, it has changed, but uh, I was primarily, primarily a sew, a seamstress and knitting came afterwards in my life. But uh, this, uh, the last couple of years, this has changed a lot, like I mostly knit. And I did a little bit of echo printing on, fi on fabric, and like two pieces of fabric, which is again not a lot. So I was mostly knitting and um, I was enjoying it so much that I didn't want to do anything else. And I had so many ideas and uh, one project came after the other. Um, all these like were mostly finished uh, separately. Like uh, first, uh, it was uh, the Clumelo vest, then the Vozala uh, shawl, then the Hilputi, and then this Tolsta, and afterwards uh, the small projects. It was kind of like this. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video, and uh, hopefully uh, I will come back with a normal podcast uh, soon. Bye.